Hello humans and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. I had to shave. I'm in the hospital. I'm in Baby Watch. The Nintendo Switch is sitting back there. And I'm just here, you know, just uh, <laughs> sitting around powerless because it's going to be a C-section, guys. And uh, here's a gender reveal. It's a girl. Thank you for all of you subscribing and being patient with me. And uh, yeah, I just can't put out, uh, you know, edited videos right now because, you know, I'm... I'm in an island and I'm waiting to be a dad here within the hour probably or a couple of hours here. But in the meantime, I'll record this and hopefully you guys can see it. It I don't know how long it's going to take uh, for it to upload, but Mr. Tallarico is, is so missed in the Amico community because he's provided so much entertainment, you know, because of the level of BS. I mean, it's documentary worthy. It really, really is. Now, we have a gentleman testifying that he's the one that wrote a couple of, of um, the levels on Earthworm Jim and not Tommy. And even makes fun of the fact that uh, Tommy made a description on how he came up with, you know, some of the music that he is claiming that he made. Now, let me tell you guys this. This is a believable story. And let me tell you why. Because this is about work this is about things that have been registered and if this man is not telling the truth he could get sued right so he's got proof of whatever he's saying uh he wouldn't just go and type it you know nilly nilly <laughs> nilly willy right uh because he knows the ramifications of just bsing right so he's got the receipts and let me tell you this this is just astonishing right astonishing and i'll put a link down below on what the story is so you can get all the details you know apparently this gentleman was a musician and tommy paid him a couple of hundred bucks you know and, and uh, came up with the banjos and he's saying tommy didn't know anything about that particular instrument and he only not only did work on earthworm chin one but two this is absolutely nuts the level of BS is documentary worthy. I mean, this is why this story is so entertaining. When, whenever you think that you've reached the peak level of BS, the peak level of stories that Tallarico uh, could have told, there's still another layer. <laughs> that is what makes him so entertaining, right? And I'm sure uh, that, you know, all the people that supported the Amico back in the day aren't happy that these things are still coming out. But it's what makes the story interesting. Look, I'm not an investor, you know, so I really don't have anything to be mad about. To me, it's just brought entertainment, something to talk about with you guys during the pandemic. Um, you know, but it's been so long now. What, what are we going on? Five years. I went from being a bachelor to being married. And I'm about to have a child with my wife. That's how long this thing's been going on. Guys, check this out. If if kids wanted to play the Amico, let's say they were 12 years old, five years ago, they probably could have lost their virginity. They're probably in high school by now. They're driving. <laughs> That's how long this thing's been going on. And it has no end. Guys, looking at me without the beard, it's just weird, right? But I, by the way, I had to do it because of the hospital rules and, and you know cleanliness and COVID regulations. Not that I wanted to shave. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. You got to sacrifice. And, you know, I'm just waiting for my kid. Um, but, guys, man, this is just another layer to the story, right? And they have to make this a documentary. I mean, at some point, guys, somebody's going to make a script on this. And it's going to be an interesting story. And, uh, you know, as as much as people say a lot of vitriol towards Tallarico, <laughs> I mean, at some point, you got, you have to have a level of appreciation for the BS, right? Sort of like that movie, Catch Me If You Can, right? Where Leonardo DiCaprio is out there BSing his way through life. And uh, it looks like, you know, just from, you know, looking from afar, right? It looks like Tal Rico had maybe a somewhat of a talent, but what he really had a talent for is networking. Being at the right place at the right time, knowing what people had, and valuing it and paying them 10 cents on the dollar for it and then selling it, right? Um, 
there's people like that in life and that that is also a talent that people have you know and i'm not saying it's a great talent to have right is it's actually taking people's work and making more money on it and just giving them a, a few hundred bucks for it <laughs> and then capitalizing on that there's more ethical ways of of discovering talent you know and bring these people along and i remember that interview where he's saying yeah you know i, I helped people along the way and i brought brought them out and stuff and I mean, you could say that, you know, you could say that, but uh, you really can't mean it all that much if you're not putting the people's name on the work, right? You can say, yeah, I gave him an opportunity, right, by hiring him and he made the music, he helped me make the music. I mean, you can try to insert yourself, but that's a whole different thing saying this is how I wrote it when you hired a guy to do it. <laughs> that's a big stretch. And then... You know, not to, not if you don't give the guy credit, then you can't can't say you brought people along, right? If you give the person credit, and you're just like the manager or the promoter, yeah, you both did it. You did the promotion side because, you know, promotions and negotiations are part of the business, right? That's really the 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 cherry on top. You have quality work, but if you don't have the right promoter, if you don't have the people that can get your skills to the right person in order to create a long-term body of work, then you don't have anything. But the problem is that he here, most of the time, he was the middleman, but he takes credit as the creator. And it's unnecessary. You could be a great middleman. People hire agents for that, right? And agents kind of stay in the background, and they get their commissions off all this great work from people, but they don't uh, seek the spotlight, which is you know, not in Tyler Rico's nature. He wants a spotlight. He wants to be the star. Is it a Napoleon complex or something like that? God, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, for him personally, it's got to be terrible now that all this stuff is coming up. You know, as Gen Xers, we never knew that the internet was going to be like this, where information can just travel at the speed of light and all the BS that you've ever said can just come down out of the sky and come back to haunt you like the way it's haunting him. But it really does make for entertaining content, right? It really uh, does make for an interesting story. It makes for a great documentary. And guys, you know, I mean, what could he do right now? I'm telling you, if somebody wanted to make money, that you don't have to change anything about Tolerico whatsoever. All you have to do is tell him, and you'll make this money back, by the way, <laughs> You know, how much money do we need to make this console? Seven million dollars, eight million dollars. OK, let's make it and just follow him around. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Turn on the camera and let Tommy be Tommy <laughs> and let him talk. And people will follow the show, follow the show. And in real time, they're going to be Googling everything and everybody's going to be commenting <laughs> on everything. That is what I think. Why I think DSP is the perfect, right? The perfect spokesperson for the Intellivision Amico if he ever launches, right? <laughs> Jeez. Guys, it's just another layer. I hope everybody's well out there, guys. I'm going to be off for a couple of days. Maybe I'll make some short videos like the kind you've been seeing. That's all I have access to here, guys. The internet is not great. The content that I get to see is not great. And the funny part is that <laughs> those shorts that I make of reaction stuff get more views than this right here that I find more interesting. <laughs> it's nuts. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. And uh, wow, Mr. Tallarico is the gift that keeps on giving. I wish he would come back and give us some more of this sweet content. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.